Today, we're going to talk about why the seller may not take your offer. We're going to go over with Nefertiti Amin Ra. She's my sister and Mildred Morris. She's one of our clients that recently sold her home. We want you to get a really good idea about when the offers come in, particularly in multiple offer situations, how your offer is evaluated and how you can probably get your offer to stand out. So I'm Shahida Hill, getting you over the hill to home ownership and helping you confidently buy your first home. So we have some questions that we're going to ask. Any other questions, please put them in the comments and we'll be sure to get to them. But the main purpose of this video is to make sure you understand from a seller's perspective what they're looking for in an offer. All right, so we're going to start with Mildred. Mildred, why did you decide to sell? Like, why, were you, um, why were you wanting to sell your home? We noticed that it was a seller's market. It was becoming a big thing, you know, during this time. And we had been deciding prior to this when we would sell our homes. So we were discussing that. We reached out to your team um, to help assist us with the selling process. Okay, very good. So Nefertiti, go through a little bit about how that process works. So somebody calls you to get their home sold, what are you going to do first? I met with them in person to go over the comps. Uh, there was a home very similar to theirs that sold a week prior. It had a little more square footage, but it was a very close comp to what they had um, to their home. I scheduled a photographer to come in to take professional photos of the home, the interior, exterior, and... Um, what did you set the showings for? Because in this market, you pretty much know you're gonna, probably going to get offers pretty quickly. So how did you set up the showing schedule and when did you stop showings? Okay, we made the showings go live on Friday morning at 10 a.m., and, uh, and it uh, went through t until Sunday afternoon at about 2 p.m. Okay. Was that the initial time or did you cut it off early? We got such an overwhelming response that uh, we had to cut it a little short just so that we'll be able, because again, they wanted it to go through the weekend and we didn't want to overwhelm the sellers with folks still coming in during the week when they had to work. How did the showings go? Were you surprised at how many people came in that weekend, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Mildred? Because you had to be out of the house during that time. Yes, um, we were told that um, we received a great response and a lot of people came in. Um, it was kind of amazing because even when we were doing the offers, when we were going over the offers, people were still contacting Nefertiti <laughs> about seeing the home. So, right. <laughs> And they really wanted to see the home, but unfortunately we, we had to cut had to cut off so we couldn't do that. But right. I was just amazed at the response that we did receive. So Mildred, um, what did you do when you were looking over the offer? So now for TD comes Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon, what were the three things? I know you said you had three things that you made sure that you were gonna do in these offers that you thought were was helpful. Um, first, um we discuss with Nefertiti um, the different types of offers. So we'll know what we were looking at, which were cash, um, conventional loans, and FHA, and how each one of those work. Um, as far as how fast you get your money, how fast the <laughs> closing time, because we were trying to close pretty quick. Um, so that was one of the first things that we looked at. And then we also looked at the amount, how who was offering what, what was in the stipulation, like what um, were they paying earnest money, were they um, paying over the asking price um, based on appraisal and things like that. Um, and also, I decided it would be best for us to look at all of the offers at once, as opposed to as they came in. Right. Because I felt like if I looked at each one as they came in, I would have been um, led to pick an offer 
quick without knowing what would come behind it. Behind that, so right. I decided to pick a date and just say, okay, on this date, we'll sit down, we'll go over all of the offers, and we'll make a decision based on the offer. Another thing that Nefertiti um, brought to the table as well was when she said, well, pick the pick three of them, your top three. Right. Just in case, you know, we have to come back to the table. Anything is can happen or whatever. And that's what we did in which we needed to use that. So I'm so glad that she did. All right. So Nefertiti, how many offers, how many showings did you have over the three days? And then how many offers did you receive? Okay. We had about 32 showings. And out of that, we had about 15 offers to come in. Okay. Now, when, and this is going to be helpful for our buyers when you're in a multiple offer situation. Now, when you get 15 offers, do you even consider any that come in at list price? Of course, so you have to present all offers. Some of them, most of them were not at list price. We did have one uh, cash offer at list price, but we also had a cash offer way above list price. And so that one was eliminated by the, by, by the sellers. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it just I'm just letting him know that I guess when people say, well, I came in at list, why wasn't I considered when you're getting 15 offers, it might be half might come in at list, but the other half come in above it. So it's not necessary to even look at the ones at 285, 290, whatever. That was automatically placed in the no pile. All right. So you had three offers. They were all above list price. Which one that y'all looked at the most closely? So what is the offer that you wound, wound up selecting, Mildred? Or do you want Nefertiti to go and kind of add on to it? What offer did you select? I'll go with Mildred first. Well, at, in the beginning, um, I think we had two cash offers and then we had a few conventionals and then we had the FHA. We went with a cash offer in the beginning and that didn't work out well, but it did. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. Times, um, when things don't work out, it's working in your favor. Um, right. So it didn't go through. So we were able to go back to the table and we looked at one of the, the second one we selected, which was, I think it was a conventional um, loan, right? Um, yeah. And that's the one that we decided to go with. Okay. And it, it went over there. They were offering over asking price. And they also were offering a large amount of earnest money, as well as the stipulating that if the home appraised for a certain amount, that they will pay an additional 20000 or something over the appraisal price. So okay. it kind of um, was similar to the cash offer. So right. it wasn't, it was just a matter of, a little extra time because it was a loan versus cash. Okay, good. All right, so let's talk about this offer, Nefertiti. So it came in at what was the price of the offer price? We were listed at two eighty five. It came in at what? The offer price was three fifteen. So that's thirty thousand dollars above list price, and they offered how much in earnest money? They offered twenty thousand in earnest money. Now, why was that important and versus somebody offering like $1,000 or $3,000 in earnest money? Why did $20,000 of earnest money matter? Because it showed that they were very much interested in the, in the property and they, um, you know, they, they were serious about, about that offer. So they, they wanted to show us that they're willing to put a large amount down. Okay. And if anything happened, so if say they terminated outside of some of their contingencies, that $20,000 would have went to you, um, Mildred, as the seller to, you know, as damages of them terminating or getting out of the deal early. They so were so serious and willing to risk that should, you know, anything work, not work in their favor. Okay, good. So $20,000. And then tell them about the appraisal gap for this one. That's what Mildred was mentioning. They they offered above appraised value if it didn't appraise. Because the only comp that right. we had um, in that community was at 285. So we weren't sure that was going to appraise yeah. at 315. That's correct. And so this buyer offered $15,000 over the appraised value should the property not appraise. And the property did appraise for three hundred and five thousand. Again, they offered three fifteen, and so they paid that difference of uh, the ten thousand dollars. 
Okay, so they were able to borrow the 305, that's what they're appraised for, but at yes. the um, but at the table, they had to come out with ten thousand dollars out of their own pocket. So you were guaranteed almost at least Mildred at three fifteen. Yes. Yes. Um, let's go back a little bit with the offer. So that you've accepted the offer, the offer had a due diligence period for them to do inspections. So how did that work? Like, did they ask for any repairs or anything during this time? Okay, we had a five day due diligence period. Um, the buyers had an inspector come, I think, well, on the second day of their due diligence. And they actually had their parents come on the third day. <laughs> they, they, they wanted to counter and ask for some in lieu of repairs because there were very minor repairs that they were asking for. They wanted to go ahead and include the patio furniture. Okay. And Mildred had beautiful patio furniture. She said had one patio on, on the uh, side of the home and a separate patio that she had built on the back of the home. And both had beautiful patio furniture. So we did negotiate that into the contract. So you didn't have to do any repairs. I negotiated for them to keep the patio any furniture. Any repairs. And Mildred, no repairs. I know you were I know since this wasn't a cash offer, it was a finance deal that you kind of were like making sure that this was going to go through. What happened when you guys negotiated the patio furniture? You know, was that more, did you feel more comfortable <laughs> with this deal now? Um, yes, that's when we knew that they really wanted the home because um, who <laughs> negotiates patio furniture? <laughs> right. right. For repair, but the repairs were minor things that either way that we would be open to, you know, going, um, assisting the new buyers with. All right. So we know that they had the appraisal. Appraisal came in. Um, they already knew they were going to pay a certain amount above the appraised value. So that wasn't an issue. You get to closing and they did a walkthrough. Okay. So they do a walkthrough prior. So how do you prep your clients, Nefertiti, as to like, getting out of the house? Like what are some things you say like prior to closing, make sure you do this, this, and this. Okay, prior to closing, again, it was uh, owner-occupied up until maybe a week prior to closing, and um, my clients were moving out of the home. They had a, a few boxes left over, but they pretty much had cleared out the home. So the buyers came by probably three to four days prior to the closing date. And they went through the home. <laughs> they had already, we had already given them a seller's disclosure to include all the items that would be left behind to include fixtures, blinds, you know, all, all of the items, you know, certain appliances and things of that nature. The um, buyer's agent calls me and says, hey, what happened to the freezer? <laughs> your, se <laughs> your, your seller checked that a freezer would be included. And uh, we said, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a standalone My, um, freezer. Let's talk about the freezer. They had a standalone, standalone freezer, in the, freezer in the garage. That's so not correct. like the refrigerator freezer. It was like a standalone freezer that we said at the very beginning, when you sign your disclosures, what's staying and what's going, we had checked, not we, but, you know, Mildred checked that it was staying. And um, they moved it out or so. <laughs> so they didn't have the freezer there during the walkthrough. So this That's became right. an issue, I guess, at the closing. I didn't even think anything of it until the walkthrough. And that's when it came back, the freezer, the standalone freezer. And I was like, what are they talking about? The refrigerator, the refrigerator, the <laughs> You know, I'm only thinking about the freezer to the, in the refrigerator, right. I'm not thinking about in the garage, the old um, <laughs> standalone right. Um, little storage freezer. I'm not even thinking about that. And what happened, we had gave it away. We had gave away, the, <laughs> we right. gave it away to someone, and I didn't want to have to go back and ask that person. Look, I need you to return the freezer. Please. <laughs> Bring that freezer back, <laughs> right? So, um, and the buyers wouldn't let it go. They really wanted the freezer to be part of the home sale, which, right. if it's something that I signed to, I have to follow through with it. So we had to wind up paying for a, a replacement freezer for them to have a replacement freezer. Okay, so y'all worked that out at closing. They were kind of, and, uh, and 
both sides kind of get picky at the end where they feel like they're paying so much money above appraised value. We're doing all this, yeah. and we're at least going to get this freezer. And you're like, you're already paying $10,000. What's a freezer? Like, what's a big deal? Um, but they made it a big deal toward the end. But FTD was able to smooth that over. Like, okay, it's just a freezer. Let's close. Um, we were in the wrong, but again, it's still just a freezer. <laughs> like, they were making a big yeah. deal about a freezer. Um, all right, so let's talk about next steps. So you're closed. You have your YouTube channel where you go over all the decorating and interior design. I know that's a love of yours and a passion of yours. And we're going to link um, Mildred's channel below. So what do you want to tell people about your channel, Mildred? Well, my channel is fairly new. I started my channel about two years ago. I decided just to go for it. Um, just go out there and present it to the world. So that's what I decided to do. I enjoy interior decorating. So you'll see a lot of interior design, DIYs, cook with me, um, lifestyle, um, a lot of projects that I've done. You'll see my move from the home to um, <laughs> my new space now and the new my new beginning. You'll see, you'll be able to see that. Um, I have not yet um, did a video of the um, of the staging for the house. Okay. But I, oh, that's good. A video of it. So okay. I'm edit that. And I'm okay, good. It up here so that the people that watch this video, they're able to see that transformation and how beautiful everything turned out. Yes. And she's a beautiful, not only a beautiful home, but definitely a beautiful spirit, beautiful person, Mildred. We're very help, very thankful and blessed that you chose us to list your house um, and to go through this experience together. And if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe definitely to her channel. It's called Behind Closed Doors with Mildred. Yeah, so, and she has great design sense and some of the um, wallscapes, you call it a wallscape? Yes, or focal walls. Focal walls, so she does focal walls and that sort of thing. I have no design bone in my body, really. So I really, you know, anything DIY and stuff, she really has some beautiful things and makes it look um, easy or makes it look like something maybe you can do yourself. Um, but definitely, I think you, people can hire you too, right? But yes, they can they hire you? Okay. So she has her information um, on the channel. But again, we'll list it down below. And if you have any questions about how the seller looks at your offer or if you're selling your house and you want to get some more information, we'll have that in the, um, the links below. Do y'all want to share anything else about your experience? Um, Mildred and then Nefertiti. So Mildred, anything else you want to share that would be helpful for other sellers? Yes, that is, it, it is so important. And I am so blessed to thank you, ladies. I am so blessed to have worked with both of you. Um, it was an amazing experience. You guys were very thorough. Um, on time, anytime I reached out, you returned the call, answered all questions. Um, it's, you held my hand through it and walked me <laughs> right through. So um, it was a breeze. It was so right. flawless. You know, it was. It felt natural. It felt beautiful. And it was a good experience. And that's what's important when you select your realtor to make sure that it's someone that makes you feel comfortable, that can answer all of your questions, that doesn't, they're not easily frustrated or don't seem concerned about your concerns. So mm -hmm. I just thank both of you guys um, for thank just walking us through the process because it was amazing. It was amazing. Right. Thank, you. thank you so much. Now, Priti, do you have any closing thank words you. or any tips for sellers? Uh, Tell first of all, thank buyers. you, Mildred. Thank you, Shahida. This is uh, great information for our buyers as well as our sellers. Uh, wow. Patience is key. Mildred was great to work with. We had a, a few bumps in the road as, as we do with most transactions. But again, and, and communication is very important. And, you know, and we have to say, stay uh, in communication back and forth throughout the entire process. And again, it, it was a pleasure working with you, Mildred. And again, we treat all of our, our buyers and sellers like their family and customer service is very important to us. And um, we, we want you to find that, that match. We want you to find your perfect home. We want you, know, you to find your, the right buyer to purchase your home. So again, um, it's always a pleasure. We love being in the uh, matchmaking business to get you 
Uh, <laughs> did you confidently close, whether you're the buyer or the seller. So it was a okay. pleasure. Very good. So remember, Behind Closed Doors with Mildred, it'll be in the description. Make sure you click on it. Thank you so much, Mildred, Never TV, for joining us. And again, any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you so much.